Hey everyone, welcome to another video on Guardian XOC where today we're going to be overclocking yet a, another Intel processor. Seems like I'm doing a lot of Intel processors to start this channel out. But I've got a new desk and I actually have a better setup for overclocking this time, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you can see, I have now a full desk. This is a lot bigger than the uh, last one I had. I actually made this myself out of pretty much recycled wood. It's it's pretty rough looking, but it's got a nice surface and gives me a lot more room so I can have all of my uh, test bench set up right here. And then on this half, I can have that set for other stuff, uh, current project, hopefully this becomes a future video and uh, other nerdy, hobbies but anyways direct your attention to the test bench here we can see it's the same uh, CPU pot I had last time that I made myself um, this is an Asus P7 P55D motherboard as you can see there uh, I have a Xeon X3450 it's a Winfield uh, Xeon 4 cores 8 threads I still have the same CX600M power supply, uh, Intel SSD, and I'm just using a HD3450, is this also 3450? Interesting, I, I did not realize that coincidence. But HD3450 just for basic uh, video output. We're going to be running this on dry ice still. Uh, that's just a lot cheaper than liquid nitrogen. I don't have the setup for liquid nitrogen yet. So let's uh, get into it. Well, we now have it sitting at about negative 50 degrees, this at least as uh, far as this thermal couple can read. Uh, I'm not sure how accurate this thermal couple reads past negative eight, uh, 50 degrees Celsius. So we've got the, some dry ice in there with acetone. And so now. I need to restart it, go into the BIOS, and we'll see what we can do. Okay, so... I don't want to spend too much time uh, just showing how I'm going to be changing settings to reach an overclock, but I just want to go over really quick uh, how you overclock one of these Xeons that have uh, effectively a locked multiplier. The maximum multiplier that it can reach is 21, and that's actually still, because of uh, this motherboard, it's actually allowing it to use a uh, one step higher multiplier of 21, which is the first step of the turbo boost multiplier which I think can go up to 24 but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna maximize the base clock and I'm hoping that this will go higher um, I'm not sure how well it will scale with uh, below zero temperatures um, that's highly dependent upon uh, the integrated memory controller and we'll of course be changing the IMC voltage along with it so uh, I'll run some benchmarks and try to find out where that is stable. I'll see you on the other side. Our maximum base clock seems to be ending at 245 megahertz, uh, and that's at a uh, VTT voltage of 1.38. It just really isn't uh, scaling any higher. Though that is a lot better, I could not get to go above 225 on air. So with that, we're now going to be trying to push the core speed. I'll probably start it at a nice easy speed of like 3.5 gigahertz and we'll go from there and then start benchmarking. And I forgot to mention before, but we'll be benchmarking Cinebench, both uh, R15 and 11.5, um, HardwareBot, uh, X265, and SuperPi 1 million. I didn't want to do too many long benchmarks today because I want to keep the session fairly short and would that keep the video short. So we now have saved that to the profile. We'll be lowering base clock frequency uh, back down to a more reasonable speed. Uh, you know, 
know, I can start at 3.8 gigahertz. And uh, we'll give it 1.2. We'll just go straight for 1.275 volts. pass of R15 and we got 719 on 4.6 gigahertz at 1.616 volts and I had the memory at 2.2 gigahertz approximately and that is DDR3 of course so gonna take a screenshot of this for HLB bot and then we'll move on to the other benchmarks. I was not able to push it any higher than 4.6 gigahertz. It just was not stable, not even at 4.65. So it looks like I'll be doing all the benchmarking at this speed for CPU and RAM. So I should be able to get these pretty quickly done and then uh, we can call it good for the day. <laughs> Okay, so I've been at this for a couple hours now and I've decided to just skip SuperPi because I don't really care that much about SuperPi 1 a million and I really want to get to just finding the maximum frequency for the Xeon. I've already hit 4.5 frequency or 4.5 gigahertz on air on a single core, so now let's see why I can go on dry ice. Well, that was quite unsuccessful. Apparently, with dry ice, it does not really scale very well on that Xeon to uh, get the maximum frequency out of that, or I degraded it in the process of doing this. I was able to get 4.5 gigahertz on a single unhypothetic core uh, on just air, and that did not turn out to be any better once I brought below zero. So. With that, I would like to say thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see future videos, please subscribe, like, comment down below. And until then, I will see you in the next one. This is Guardian XOC, signing out.